Okay, welcome. And we are just finishing just now the Gate of Oneness class. And what we're going to talk about now is what is Rosh Hashanah about? Rosh Hashanah is coming next Monday night. All of humanity is being recognized and put at, as the pinnacle of God's creation in that the highest, um, the highest form of, of creation is God Almighty's treasured creation, which is um, God, which is humanity, and that he created us on the sixth day of creation. And even though it's the new year of uh, the new year, Rosh Hashanah, it theoretically should be on the first day of creation, which would be six days earlier. No, we celebrate it, recognize, crown God, the king of, of all of creation, and even beyond anything that's created as uh, something that is celebrated on Rosh Hashanah, the date on which mankind was created. So this is a gift for us to recognize the centrality of humanity to creation. We are not a, an add-on to creation. We are not a, n neither an accidental nor an intentional, just an add-on uh, cumulatively somehow better qualitatively or quantitatively than other creations, but we are in a completely different league than other creations. And this is the focal point and the culmination of God's creation of the world is creation of Adam, the first person. And, and then Hava, he created a mate for Adam that he could, together with her, then bring humanity into greater and greater existence and greater and greater abundance to bring more people to be able to recognize God Almighty. So when we come together in the synagogue on Rosh Hashanah, our primary purpose is to crown God as the king, to say God Almighty. I am crowning you. I, as an individual human being, together with the rest of the human beings, I'm, crowd, I'm crowning you as the king of all. And not only the king of all in a um, grand sense, but also in a practical sense, taking in uh, the recognition of the coronation of God Almighty as my king. And in the process of doing that, when you're coronating someone as a king, it's only logical that you would then present to the king your needs as a subject to the king in order to fulfill my mission in crowning you the king. I, I would like to make a request, please, that I would have health and children and, and peace and harmony and, and, and um, financial success to be able to provide the physical needs in the world to be able to carry out this special, special mission. I should have an abundant income and so forth. So this is what we are doing on Rosh Hashanah. And when we want to understand God's vision for humanity and God's vision to the world, we need to only look inside the special prayer book of Rosh Hashanah, in which we see that the centrality of the prayers, the additional prayers and added for Rosh Hashanah, almost entirely focus on the change in the world and the change in the nations of the world, how the nations of the world are going to be um, brought to the recognition of God Almighty. And that gives us an indication of our purpose in creation, that our purpose of those that know God Almighty and have given get tasked by God Almighty to bring that knowledge, to share that knowledge and share that, that insight and really share the gift of knowing that God Almighty is not only creating us and created us in the past tense, but he's creating us right now. He's creating us new every day and every instant. And also, not, it's not that he's a far away, um, uh, you know, creator, uh, orchestrating the affairs of man, but he's actually in each one of us with a divine spark uh, that is, is bringing us into existence and bringing us uh, the strength and the capability to carry out his vision for us. And I, so I'd like to encourage everyone to open the prayer book, the Mahsar, as it's called, to look through it in advance in whatever language they understand and see that it's mostly related. If we look in the additional prayers, uh, mostly related to the um, coronation of God, that all of humanity will recognize God Al Almighty, that everything will recognize that God is His, um, is the one that's bringing him to existence, and everything is brought into existence by God Almighty. So every creation will recognize that God is its creator. This is really the, the whole event of Rosh Hashanah. And, and we see also in the, in the Musaf prayer, in the, in the extra prayers, of, and that's in the Amida I was just quoting from, from the, from the silent Amida. If we look also on Musaf, we have the whole concept of 
Malchus of crowning Hashem king. Look at the verses that are quoted there, talking about how God Almighty is the king of everybody and king of the universe, and also in Zichrenus, and talking about how God remembers every single creature and every everything that's happened and, and remembers the, the great righteous people of all time. And then we see Shephus, the, the act of proclaiming God Almighty as the king of all of creation. So this is the lesson that we have for Rosh Hashanah. This is our guidebook for um, for what where our mission is in the coming year. And our job is now in the last days before Rosh Hashanah to take stock to what degree that we've brought humanity to the recognition of God Almighty and how we're going to plan to carry out the fulfillment of the prayers that we have in the, in the prayer book to bring it to absolute reality that's the front and center that everyone is conscious of and aware of and focused on the oneness of God Almighty, just like the Baal Shem Tov taught us. And Rabbi Chirik, do you have anything you'd like to add? Did you need to unmute yourself? Okay, I think Rabbi Chirik is still muted. Maybe he stepped away. Thank you very much. Everyone should have a good Shabbos and have a good and blessed New Year. Take the time to repair. Take the time to look inside and think about what it takes to bring this to reality. Thank you very much. Shana Tova.